Soldering wires in electronic devices is fairly easy, but there is some skill involved. Um, there's also some tools that you can use to make soldering much easier. What I'm using here is a 25 watt Weller soldering iron and a El Cheapo Radio Shack uh, soldering station. This likes to tip over so I just hot glued it to a piece of plastic just to get a little bit more uh, surface area so it doesn't tip over as easily. On it there is also a sponge and you're going to need one of these. Um, natural sponges work the best however you can get the dollar store um, you know synthetic sponges and they'll just burn a um, little bit easier and they won't hold up as long but you want to make sure that this is damp it doesn't have to be dripping wet it just has to be damp on this there's a magnifying glass which is pretty self-explanatory and two alligator clips for holding what you're going to be soldering because whenever you solder you always seem to need three hands no matter what you're doing this helps that and this is kind of hard to do with the camera in front of me so I'm going to do my best um, now as far as solder there's different types of solder this has a flux as a uh, rosin core which means that rosin is used to clean um, the oxidation off of metal uh, you, and really, you whenever you're soldering electronics or wires, you want to have a rosin core. Um, if you don't want a rosin core, you're going to know why. So if you're new to this, pick up one that's a rosin core. This is 60-40, which means 60% tin, 40% lead. There is lead-free solder, and you're supposed to use gloves when you work with this but I don't know anybody that actually does nor do I know anybody that has died from that touching this um, 6040 solder uh, has a melting point of about 315 degrees Celsius uh, you can get different you know values you can get uh, you know 70 30 or even 40 60 where or I'm sorry yeah uh, forty percent tin, sixty percent lead. It brings the melting point up or down, depending on you know what you need. Sixty forty is pretty good, and this is bought from Radio Shack. I've had this for a few years, and I do a lot of soldering, so a pound of solder goes a long way. Um, the one thing is, you want to use a rosin core, not an acid core. An acid core, acid core solder is only used for plumbers. If you're going to be uh, soldering pipe together use that on electronics and it will eat the board it it's not going to be good so first thing we're going to do is i'm going to show you how to solder two wires together now there's two ways of doing it you do a pigtail where you twist it like this and solder it together the only problem with that is it doesn't look as nice i want this to be in line so i'm trying to do this with the camera and there you go so what I'm going to do is clip that there, clip that there, and I hope you can see this camera's not the best. Now, when you actually do this soldering, I see a lot of people drip it onto the wire, and you don't want to do that. That'll cause a cold solder joint, and we'll touch on that later. Now, if you notice, the tip of the soldering iron needs to be tinned. Basically, what tinning does is you use a little bit of solder after it's been warmed up to make it wet. And then you use the sponge, which normally would be in the thing if you don't want to do it this way because you can burn yourself to clean it off. See? It's nice and tinned. So then, all you do is put the iron underneath the wires. And then, again, I apologize, this is difficult to do so far away. You heat the wires up. And this iron isn't hot enough yet. There it goes. As you can see, the solder just melts onto the wire. 
this I've actually soldered much better than this. It's just very difficult to do from a distance with a camera in front of you. But that's it. Now, I've seen a lot of people do this. And then they just drop it on. That's no good. You don't want to do that. Now, if you do it correctly, it should have a very shiny look to it after it's dried. Now, if you use lead-free solder, lead-free solder um, melts at around between 340 to 370 degrees Celsius. And it's much harder to find cold solder joints using that um, because it's not as shiny like this is. Now, I did a terrible job here, I will admit that. So please don't judge me on that. But that's basically how you, how you solder wires together. Now, solder, although it does help create some rigidity, do not use solder as, as I don't know what, how you would call it, a load-bearing device. Now, granted, that's pretty strong. But if you were to just take the two wires and touch them like this and solder them together, it would break apart very easily. So that's that. Now what you can then do is take some heat shrink, and normally you would put this on ahead of time because you wouldn't be able to slip it over. And you can buy this at Radio Shack, at a hardware store, and it's basically a piece of rubber that you can cut. And let me get my lighter. And it shrinks. The slider is actually too hot for it, so it might melt it a little bit. It shrinks, and it makes it look a little bit nicer instead of just wrapping electrical tape around it. Although that does work very well, um, this is just a much nicer way of doing it. Especially if the wire wasn't clear, if it was black, it would be almost unnoticeable. So, and the other important thing is always keep your tip clean. I know, haha -ha jokes. But, any dirt or any crud that gets built up on the tip will insulate the heat and it can also infect or I don't even know what the word would be for that but creep into the actual solder joint itself which is not going to be good so that's that now <clears throat> wires are one thing now there are different types let me talk about this a little bit there's different types of uh, soldering irons this is a 25 watt. This is generally used for circuits, circuit boards. Personally, I like a hotter iron. I like something like a 45 or maybe a 60 watt iron. Uh, the reason that you would use a lower wattage iron is that way you have less chance of damaging the you know, delicate components on the board or even the board itself. If you ever look at a circuit board, there's all these little traces. Those traces aren't very durable. Um, you heat them up too much or you pry on it, they'll peel off um, and at that point you're screwed. Now this is a single um, this board's junk, that's why I'm handling it the way I am, but this is a single layer board. Things like motherboards that are in your computer, they're multi-layer. They could be seven, eight, nine, ten layers, meaning there's this seven times. And then there's seven layers. So the things that come through this have to be soldered on all seven layers. That's not something you're usually generally going to be dealing with. This is, uh, you know, this is pretty much what you're going to be dealing with. Now, to solder something like this, let me get the camera down. It's very simple. I'll use a little bit of the desoldering wick. Again, I apologize, this is kind of difficult to do. There we go. And we just desoldered it. And that's that resistor right there. But to solder it back, let's say that that was never soldered, make sure you touch the pad. Let me see if I can get the camera up a little bit. Here, 
it's hard to see on the camera. There's a pad, and then there's the little piece of the uh, resistor sticking through. You want to heat both of those up. And there you go. That simple. Now, you want to keep as much heat. In other words, how, how can I say this? These components are sensitive to heat as this whole board is, obviously, as just about anything in life is. You use heat to melt the solder, but you don't want to use an excessive amount because an excessive amount is going to burn these components out. Now, if you notice, these chips on this board are seated in a socket, so it was easier for whoever made this just to solder the socket in and then you just push the chip in. So that made it a little bit easier. Um, But as you see, it melts very quickly and very easily. So, you, you know, it doesn't take much to melt this stuff. Now, I personally like a hotter iron. Even if I'm working on circuit boards, I like using a hotter iron. But that takes skill because it means that you got to get in and get out as quick as possible. You got to heat it up, do what you got to do, and get the iron off of it. Otherwise, you're going to bake the circuit or you're going to bake the board. And you don't want to do that, obviously, because it'll ruin it. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Um, there's different diameters to solder. You know, this, this is fairly thin. What is this? This is uh, one millimeter. You get thinner, you get thicker. I personally like this because it just it's thin, it melts quick. Um, it's just easy to work with. But you can get thicker. You can, I believe you can even get thinner than this. Now, if you notice, there's that uh, smoke. That comes off of it. Hang on, I'm trying to see. See all that smoke there? That's actually not lead smoke. That's not tin. That's the rosin core that's smoking. Because there's almost like a liquid core. Not really liquid. It's like a paste inside there. That's what's actually smoking. You can even see it on the iron. After it sits for a while, you see some black just kind of build up around the top after it burns for a little bit. Of course it's not going to do it now. Yeah, see it's turning orange. That's the rosin burning. Again, I've never heard of anybody dying from inhaling this, but uh, it's probably a good idea not to make a habit of it um, because inhaling any kind of chemical is not good. Um, so that's just a quick basics on soldering. Again, don't when you solder, make sure you heat the joint up and melt the solder on the joint itself, not on the iron. Now, you can tin the iron, like I just did before, slightly. That will conduct the heat to the surface of whatever you're soldering better, because it's liquid, but uh, only a little bit. Now, one thing, if you don't have a sponge, one thing people do is, because I've just been, in case you haven't seen, I've just been, you know, wiping this off keep it clean. One thing some people do is, I'll show you, they tin it and they they flick and they put a piece of paper down or something, they flick on the paper. You can do that too. I, I used to do that too, but I just found that having a sponge nearby is uh, you know, nice to have. And it, all you do is wet it down with water. I use a little bit of Simple Green um, in a spray bottle. wet it. I just found that it uh, keeps the tip a lot cleaner. So I don't have to clean up all the rosin residue after a while. It just somehow magically does it. But that's that. Um, I would recommend you get yourself some kind of a station like that. It makes life a whole lot easier. Especially when you don't have to uh, you know, lay the, ca the uh, soldering iron down because this is extremely hot. It's about 300 degrees Celsius. Um, and that will give you a wicked burn. I have done it before. I know people, pretty, pretty much anybody who does this has done it at least once in their life and has learned from it because you don't want to do it again. Um, let me see what else. 
think that's it for just basic soldering. Uh, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments. And I'm sorry if um, if I get a little tongue-tied occasionally. I'm recovering from a cold, and you can't tell, I'm a little bit nasal right now. And uh, my mind's not exactly very clear. So if you have any questions or comments, suggestions, whatever, put them in the, uh, put them in the comments. Thanks. Bye.